And so at Memorize, we're trying to develop an incredibly powerful learning product. But what we found was we kind of run out of science. So what we did is we asked the world's scientists, hey guys, can you come up with your ultimate way of learning? Well, the idea was to throw out a challenge to researchers everywhere, but also to ordinary people if they wanted to have a go. Um, and the challenge was, if you had an hour to study, in this case, some foreign language vocabulary, what would be the best way of using that hour? Time constraint, you know, but one hour. So if you're putting in you know, one element, one aspect, uh, people having to do some imagery or whatever it might be. That's less time for them to do something else. One of the motivations of the whole project was that, that although we have over a century of research on these questions, that research doesn't really tell you, you know, how would you put all the various elements together to get the best possible method. How can the world's top brains create the best way for everyone to learn. The winning entry also turned out to be the one that people said that they enjoyed the most. Mm. It's got these lovely images of rooms and a little bit of generating keywords, a little bit of testing. There was a change, there were different things going on, which I think also maintains motivation, maintains attention. They encourage people to associate the keyword with the target word, and they use these images of rooms and the memory palace idea. You may have heard of memory palace techniques, through, uh, through Sherlock Holmes, also in the Hannibal Lecter novels, but in fact this technique goes back to ancient Greece. It's very simple really, it just uses our very powerful spatial memories to support our memory for words. So that was by Van den Broek. One of the members of that team was actually one of my old rivals from the World Memory Championships, a guy called Boris Conrad. So you look at the foreign word and it asks you to make an association with what that word looks like, what that word might sound like, and associate it with some concept that's familiar to you. So if you had the Spanish word, uh, sumo, then you might think of a sumo wrestler. And when you find out that actually that means juice, you imagine your sumo wrestler drinking juice in the living room. So we had about um, 18 teams take part, which was quite a big deal because to take part you had to run a fully controlled scientific experiment showing how your methodology performed against the baseline which was provided by the scientists at University College London. The first phase was judged on how well people's solutions had, had done against this baseline task. And then the next stage was implementing all of that on Memrise. We took the top five, all of which showed a huge boost to learning, and we actually built them ourselves on a special platform so we could test them against each other in a massive competition with thousands of learners learning all the words for an hour and being tested a week later to see which one worked best. Just thinking about the ones that did get through to the final, they all had some features in common, and these are things like retrieval practice, in other words... To try to remember the translation of a word over and over again, even if you're getting it right, doing that repetitively is a very powerful way for reinforcing what you know. To Nani and Giovanni, two students, put a methodology together which um, involved people making up mnemonics themselves. And then there was a beautiful algorithm from a team out of Oxford and UCL. They really modelled in a very sensitive way how the brain takes on new information. And they came up with a kind of a recipe, a pace for learning, which proved very, very powerful in the end results. Um, but the data are all going to be openly available, so anybody can come along and look at these data and ask new questions that we might not even have thought about. Hopefully an ongoing tradition of openness and sharing in the development of educational technology. We want to make sure that the mechanisms that people employ on their smartphones or on their tablets or whatever are really effective and efficient um, and scientifically grounded methods. Hopefully can do if um, genuine scientific rigour um, and an open competitive mindset is brought to the research which goes into it. For sure in future somebody will come up with a, a method that's better but that, that can then become incremental if we perhaps try future iterations of this whole competition. Everybody would know that the Vandenbroek winning solution is the benchmark. That's what you've got to beat now.